Hello and welcome to this video. Yeah, as you just saw, connect an RTX 4080 to the laptop and start gaming. That's kind of cool. But does it make sense? Does it make sense to connect graphics cards to a laptop these days? What technical possibilities are there? What about the performance? How expensive is the whole thing? Does it even make sense in terms of costs? We go through all of that in this video. For those who are already familiar with the topic, use the timeline and jump to the parts you are interested in. But first, let's take a look into the ways how you can connect graphics cards to a laptop. The first connection type is the EXP GDC Beast module. This is this one here. Not this whole kind of construction, I crafted this by myself. The EXP GDC Beast module is just this PCI Express module. It costs maybe around 50 to 60 euros in the internet. It depends on the connection type. This is also an older technology. It still works, but has various disadvantages due to age, which I will come to later. The other connection type runs via a PCI Express module as well, but this one is connected to the PC or laptop via USB-C. This one is a professional product, ready to use, not like my homemade one. It is from Razer, the Core X eGPU model. Here you see the PCI Express module. This is connected to the laptop via USB-C, but not every USB-C cable works or is sufficient. You need a USB-C Thunderbolt cable and your laptop needs to support Thunderbolt. Whether your laptop supports Thunderbolt or not, you can see it at the USB-C connection. Is there a Thunderbolt icon, your laptop supports it. If not, check the laptop manual to see if it's supported. Anyways, how it is set up and how the performance is, let's look at now and start with the EXP GDC module. The EXP GDC module can be connected to the laptop in three different ways. You can use the express card slot if the laptop has one. The other two alternatives are via the mini PCI express slot on the motherboard or the M.2 slot also on the motherboard. In this demonstration it is the M.2 interface that we are now connecting. To do so the Wi-Fi card needs to be removed first. The Wi-Fi card is here. And then all you have to do is connecting the cable to the M.2 interface. And that's it. The other side ends in HDMI and goes into the graphics card module. The first test graphics card is the GTX 1070. Unfortunately it is too big for my self-made case so I run it externally. The graphics card is simply placed on the module. The HDMI cable is connected to the module. And the whole thing is connected to the power supply unit. And after everything is connected, just start the laptop and the card turns on. Since we removed the Wi-Fi card, we can't access the internet and need a Wi-Fi stick or an ordinary network cable. I have already installed the graphics card driver and in the device manager you find now a GTX 1070 under the graphics cards. Let's take a look to a benchmark test. I'm just running Firestrike. And we have achieved a score of 7127 points. That's not bad at all. Of course, it's not a great score compared to modern gaming PCs, but in view of such an external graphics card via a PCI Express module, that's okay and you should be able to play quite a lot with it. However, the whole thing with this GDC module has also disadvantages, as I am testing it in this example. It only works with a very outdated NVIDIA driver, namely version 
372.54 from 2016. Probably older drivers also work, but newer drivers unfortunately do not work and that's definitely a significant disadvantage. Another disadvantage is that the whole thing is only connected to one PCI Express lane. The reason for this is that the M.2 interface only has two lanes on the motherboard and the GDC module itself only supports one lane. The situation is different with the USB-C variant which is connected with the Thunderbolt cable via which you get two or four PCI Express lanes connected but it also depends on the graphics card. More on this in the conclusion after the test results. First I'll test this variant again and convert the whole thing to the USB-C module and of course use the GTX 1060 for this. Connecting it was super easy, the graphics card was recognized immediately, Windows installed the driver and it worked straight away without any problems. So you can start right away and that's what I'm doing right now and run the same benchmark again. And we achieved 9668 points, which is approximately 35% more performance compared to the other PCI Express module. That's a really good performance boost from the card, just from the connection method, as the card is now connected with two lanes. That's why my personal favorite is the USB-C version, even though the EXP GDC module is much cheaper. For someone who has a simple laptop and just wants to make it gaming capable, this variant is definitely enough, because you can set up a simple gaming system really cheaply. What you need to know about this variant is that only older graphics cards are working. From NVIDIA the GTX 900 series and from the 1000 series the GTX 1060, 1070 and 1080, the 1080 Ti does not work and all RTX graphics cards do not work either. This means that you will not be able to use an RTX 2000, 3000 or 4000 graphics card with this. Unfortunately, I can't answer whether and how well AMD cards work as I wasn't able to test any. So, if you want to use a more modern graphics card, you definitely have to use this USB-C variant. All current graphics cards and the latest drivers are working. Now let's take a look at the test results. I have tested an RTX 4080, 3080, 3060, 2060 and a GTX 1080 Ti, 1070 and 1060 in different benchmarks and games. The GTX 1060 and 1070 are the only two cards that work with the GDC module and the USB-C module. I've tested them both in both modules and compared the results. In this DirectX 11 benchmark, you can see very clearly that the performance via USB-C with two PCI Express lanes is significantly higher than with the GDC module, which is only connected with one lane. Surprisingly, the whole thing looks completely different with the DirectX 12 benchmark. Let's take a look at the values. In the DirectX 12 benchmark, there are almost no differences in performance. One explanation could be that with one lane the performance is already full and the second lane does not produce any more performance. Think of it like a single lane road where the traffic flows optimally and no more traffic is added. The second lane would provide more traffic capacity, but if there is generally no more traffic, the amount that flows through remains the same and has no effect on the performance. This is just an attempt of an explanation. I don't know whether this is correct or not. 
Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong or if you have other possible ideas. Now let's take another look at the test results of all the graphics cards that I tested with the USB-C module and what conclusion we can draw from them. In a direct comparison of all graphics cards via the USB-C module clearly shows that the better the graphics card, the lower the increase in performance. The reason for this is the limitation to two or four PCI Express lanes and in this example the CPU performance of the laptop where we have also a bottleneck. This is why the values of the GTX 1070, 1080 Ti, 2060 and 3060 are quite close to each other. Since these are only benchmark results, let's see whether the gaming results are similar to that or not. Basically, we can see the same results in the gaming performance and even high-end graphics cards like a 4080 perform almost the same like a 1070 in some games. And the card performs even worse than a 3080. Current high-end graphics cards therefore do not provide a major performance boost via this module and would definitely be a waste of money. It would be absolutely pointless to use a high-end GPU in such a configuration. So, does it make sense to run an eGPU system these days, even in 2024? In my opinion, yes and no. Everyone knows how expensive gaming has become these days and such a system might be a cheap alternative to a full gaming PC or gaming laptop. It depends on your personal plan and purpose. If you would buy everything as new, it definitely won't make sense because a new USB-C module from Razer costs $400 without a graphics card. Additionally, you need a laptop which supports USB-C Thunderbolt and a graphics card. You would approximately spend $1,100 for a RTX 3060, a Razer Core X module and a similar used laptop to what I used in the video. And you would have only the performance of a gaming PC from 2016 or even 2015. For the same money you would get much better gaming laptops or mid-range gaming PCs. You definitely pay for performance that you cannot use. But if you still have an old graphics card or laptop or even both, you can set up a cheap second gaming system. The USB-C module is a great option and works pretty well and is dealed at $200 for a used device from Razer. There are also options to buy a no-name USB-C device from Alibaba for around $130 but without a power supply. I don't know how well it works but it might be an option either. If you want to save even more money and the graphics quality is not quite important, you can also use the EXP GDC module and run it with a GTX 1060 or 1070. The GDC module costs around $30 to $60, depends on the connection type, and the used GTX 1070 costs less than $100 at the moment of this video. Finally, let's summarize the pros and cons of both variants. Pros of the EXP GDC Beast. It is cheap, old laptops can be made gaming capable, works with Windows 11 and it is portable. And the cons, setup is complicated, only older graphics cards compatible, the GTX 900 series or GTX 1060, 1070 or 1080, not the 1080 Ti, laptop may need to be opened, Wi-Fi card may need to be removed, only old drivers compatible, no plug and play possible, system must be switched off, performance is not fully utilized. And the pros for the USB-C variant, all current graphics cards compatible, all current drivers work, can use up to 4 PCI Express lanes, plug and play while system is running, works with Windows 11 as well and is also portable. And the cons, quite expensive, performance is not fully utilized.
Thank you for watching. I hope the video was informative or helpful for those who are thinking about such a system.